Symbolism is one of those things that can bring a narrative to the next level by heightening its themes and creating a more profound level of visualization for the viewer. However, if done poorly, it can weigh down the story with esoteric sludge that'll probably just leave the audience puzzled. But in the case of Ping Pong the Animation, it would most definitely have to be the former. In fact, I'd even go as far as to say it's one of Ping Pong's shining aspects. There is a constant introduction of powerful symbolisms one after another that are masterfully intertwined with the main narrative to create a much more thorough look into Ping Pong's themes and characters. And while some of the symbolisms are quite blatant, you'd be surprised at the amount of subtlety that Misaki Oasa puts into his work, ranging from simple movements to color palette shifts that indicate mood and psyche changes of the characters. So, in this video, instead of drooling over how good ping pong is, I'm going to be trying to analyze what ping pong's symbolisms and metaphorical phrasings are trying to say, and why it's so effective in its overall delivery and execution. In the very first frames of animation, the viewer is presented with three metaphorical quotes, being Call me when you're in a pinch, say it thrice in your heart, and enter the hero, which I'll get back to at a later point. However, what I want to look at is what directly follows those quotes, a godlike depiction of some sort of masked, winged creature that flies into the air towards the moon alongside a bird. We later learn this is a depiction of Pekko in relation to Smile, but what I'm concerned about is why he is represented with wings and, ironically, a robot mask. First off, flight in ping pong is a common motif that can represent a number of things, mainly being self-achievement, but in the case of Pekko where he is depicted with wings, it represents the ability to succeed at not only ping pong, but also being a hero. This becomes evident by the quote, not all birds can fly, alongside the later match between Pekko and Dragon, where Pekko leads Dragon out and into the air to signify he has been saved from his crippling solitude by Pekko's ability to simply have fun while playing ping pong. But now comes the tricky part, the mask he is wearing. It can be quite ambiguous depending on how you look at it, so I'll try my best best to decipher the meaning behind it, if there is one. To understand this explanation, you first must have a good grasp on one of Ping Pong's main themes, mainly the one revolving around Smile. For those of you who haven't quite gotten the exact meaning behind the quote, Blood Tastes Like Iron, I'll briefly explain that it's needed to fully understand the mystery behind the mask, and one of Ping Pong's main themes. First off, blood and iron in this context directly juxtapose each other. Blood is supposed to be symbolic of life, warmth, and compassion, while iron is inversely cold, lifeless, and indifferent. When put into the context of Pekko telling Smilus, it becomes much more clear. What Pekko is trying to say to Smile is that just because everyone thinks of him as cold, shy, and heartless doesn't necessarily mean he has to stay that way. The world is filled with these type of anomalies where something like blood can taste like iron, and just like those anomalies, Smile is able to, well, smile despite of his assumed persona. Now that you understand that, I'll be talking about the mask and how it ties into the quote. Just as the quote says, anyone, even a hero, can appear to be different on the outside, but under the robot-like mask, there can be something completely different despite of what everyone believes to be true. So perhaps the mask is trying to parallel the meaning behind Pego's words of advice with his metaphorical godlike depiction. However, this is just my interpretation, so feel free to fill in any inconsistencies or additional information with this specific theory. Next, we'll move on to a more subtle touch, but I feel as if it was a nice addition that reflected the characters in an interesting way, and that is the logos on Smiles and Pekko's shirts throughout the series. Pekko is shown with the star, while Smile is a moon, but what does it mean? Well, in a traditional sense, a star and a moon are not too far apart, right? Both taking up the same night sky and being a source of light. However, in this case, their differences are what make up the meaning. The moon can be seen as a two-sided mysterious figure that is both a light and a dark side, but regardless always exists, while a star can be symbolic of talent and everlasting light. This is obviously a direct parallel with the characterization of both Pekko and Smile, with Smile's internal struggle with his assumed personality represented with the ever-flip-flopping moon, and Pekko's innate ability to simply shine wherever he goes. These specific symbols are not limited to their shirts, in fact they can be found in almost every episode scattered on various objects and in the opening theme. I love subtle touches like these because they're not too pronounced to throw you off, but leave room for reflection and analysis later on. Okay, so now, instead of analyzing a specific symbolic element, I'm going to be dissecting a scene and showing you the sheer amount of components that goes into a single match, highlighting the key points and explaining the relevance and implications of each symbol. The scene I'm going to be using is the match between Koizumi and Smile, as it's one of the most information and symbol-rich scenes in the show. Just as a standalone scene, it establishes a nearly unfathomable amount of information, not only about the characters, but also later to come symbolism. Starting off, the first thing I'd like to point out is the coach's shirt. Like Smile and Pekko's shirt, it has the same symbol that reflects the characterization of that said person. In this case, it's a butterfly, which I'll get back to in a moment. The other thing I'd like to point out is the color of his shirt. 
Purple. Purple in Ping Pong the Animation is symbolic of an earned respect that is only worn by proven and experienced players. In traditional applications, purple is symbolic of royalty and authority, so it makes sense that they would use purple to signify this. We see this idea being further enforced when Dragon is first being introduced, also sporting a purple uniform, which again symbolizes the earned respect in the world of Ping Pong. Moving on. At the start of the match, we catch a glimpse of a butterfly, a monarch butterfly to be exact. And while the butterfly in this context may seem like a metaphorical representation of Koizumi, it isn't exactly. It's a tool used to express an abstract idea that reflects Koizumi's goal as a character. However, in order for this to make sense, we have to go back to the flight motif to understand what exactly Koizumi's goal is and what he is trying to say to Smile. Going by the two quotes, you can't cross the sea on such thin wings, and you always withdraw right back into your shell like that, it can be implied that Koizumi is trying to break Smile out of his cocoon. But not only that, he also wants him to be stronger than he formerly was, so he can pass the ocean that he once could not. So technically, the butterfly is symbolic of Koizumi in a literal sense, but it can be said that Smile is also a butterfly in a cocoon state, waiting to break out into something stronger than a butterfly. And this is where it starts to get interesting. Taking all this information I've just went over, we are able to fully solve the puzzle that is the enigmatic opening scene. As we know, the winged mask creature is representative of Peko. However, what we didn't know up until this point is that the bird is symbolic of Smile. This is what Koizumi wanted Smile to become, an animal that was able to traverse the obstacles that he once could not, which is evidently a bird. This idea is further enforced considering the bird is being led by Peko, who is almost solely responsible for Smile's success as a person due to his constant guidance and support. The final piece is the moon they are flying towards. As mentioned earlier, the moon, in regard to Smile, represents the struggle between his two sides, so with both of them flying towards a full moon, is a way of saying that Peko is leading Smile towards a more desired side of his personality. I find it pretty crazy that a simple flash of imagery can supply to this amount of information and symbolic meaning, and it really shows the thought that went into creating Ping Pong. In my opinion, the symbolisms alone transcend this narrative past many other stories similar in nature and concept, because it adds a level of depth that can only be applicable through analysis and critical thought. And while this may be biased coming from someone who likes to overthink a lot, I'd like to think this still holds some truth for everyone, even if they don't take the time to appreciate it. Okay, so this concludes my partial analysis of symbolisms in ping pong, as it would take a lot more time to cover everything. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed my interpretation of this masterpiece of a series, and maybe you learned something that you didn't quite understand or catch the first time. If you enjoyed this video, some feedback on what you liked and didn't like would be greatly appreciated, and thanks for watching.